Um, in terms of storytelling, I've obviously listened and, and, and experienced um, as part of the mind travel uh, experience your music. Mm. Um, how? What's the journey been like in terms of really finding your sound? You've been inspired by other composers and, and right. musicians. Um, what's the journey that you've been on to really sort of concretize the, the yeah. Murray sound? So you know, it's just been it's been evolving in years in the making, um, and it really has kind of smashed together that Western classical training with this Eastern philosophy, not just the Eastern music, but the ideas from Eastern um, traditions, mystical traditions, uh, spiritual traditions. And so when you read about a lot of this stuff, it's kind of like, okay, how does that, how does that sound? So I, 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 as a composer, I start with the question of what would the universe sound like? And I don't mean literally to our ears. Beautiful. Because as we know, like, you know, out in space, it's a vacuum, so sound can't permeate, right? There's mm -hmm. no medium for which it can transfer. Travel. So then it's about not what it sounds like to our ears or, or physically in that way. It's more like if the universe had a sound that we can hear from its hidden side, Right, from the, the hidden side of the universe wow. that's not just the physical material. Mm -hmm. Because when you look out in space, everything we see, all the stars and planets and just you know, the physical universe we mm -hmm. can we can measure is only about four or five percent of what's out there. Right? The rest, as physicists tell us, is this dark matter and dark energy, which we can't really experience directly right. um, in our plane of existence. So 95% of the universe is inaccessible to us. Isn't that wild? And, and, and it's you just think remarkable. About, yeah. Right? So then I'm like, well, okay, what does that sound like? Correct. Right? As a composer, yeah. I'm like, I want a soundtrack. I want to score that. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I think about. I think about this kind of web network undulating, vibrating frequencies that makes up the universe past what we can measure. And what, that's a and very what's hidden to bright, us. deep question to ask. I can't imagine that, you know, I mean, a lot of musicians, most musicians, I'd say, obviously have some degree of depth to them mm -hmm. to be able to channel. But that, that question alone, being able to yeah. like ask that question and really explore that concept is, is it was actually a power, like has provided you clearly with a powerful trajectory to really uncover and understand yeah. the sound well, and your journey within that. I think it's the, well, part of it is the, my approach to music. Um, is not about entertainment. So a lot of people go into music or you know theater or, or whatever mm -hmm. it might be with the aim of entertaining mm -hmm. people and creating a you know that experience. And that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an incredible art form to do that. Uh, I'm not interested in entertaining anyone, uh, and I don't even consider myself an entertainer. People may be entertained, but that's not my primary goal. Uh, my main goal is to use music to access deeper states of being of being and of consciousness for myself and then my choice to share that is to bring everyone on the same train on that journey which you, which you are i mean that's such a deep prolific relationship that you have obviously with yourself and and in term music and it's a very powerful a very powerful thing very powerful trajectory mm -hmm. that that you're on and like thank you so much for sharing because I experienced the mind travel mm -hmm. um, event experience <laughs> and it was very very powerful um, so in designing your own headsets and, and headphones and, and uh, getting the technology right what was the whole process behind right. curating that whole situation so that's, been, that's been that's evolved step by step over the last five years because you've gone from composer to Right. You know, entrepreneur in tech, right. in tech, you know. Right. So I kind of Wonderful brought those, to marry. those, those yeah. worlds together. And, you know, in the beginning, the first mind travel kind of when I called it that. Uh, and I called it that because I wanted to come up with an, a name for the experience people might have. Right. Uh, and I thought of my own experience with it. And it's, it's, it's an experience where kind of I go on this journey in my mind. And so that's where sitting at my dining room table with a friend of mine, like that's where mind travel that's where the name came from. I said, well, that, that feels right. I'm going to go with that. Because again, it was about the experience people were having versus come see Murray Hittery, right? Come watch me play, right? That's, that's where you go, you go to, you know, the theater, you go to a show, you go see a certain artist. And that's the way we talk about it. You're going to see, you know, X, Y, and Z play. This was not about come see what I can do. It was about come have this experience. And this experience is about this journey of your mind, hence mind travel. 
So that's, that's why I called it that, and, and it wasn't about coming to see me do what I do. I'm just facilitating this experience for you. So that's first. Then, so the first one I did was here in Los Angeles in my living room, and I invited some friends and friends of friends, and about 40 people came, and we all sat and lied down in my living room, you know, in front of my piano, and I took people on about a, you know, 30 plus minute continuous experience. Mm. And, um, and afterwards, uh, I had a friend with a video camera in the other room, and I just asked people if they wouldn't mind for a minute sharing their thoughts about the experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And about 15 people went, you know, and did like these like mini interviews. And the next day I watched them, Georgia, and I was like moved. Yeah, like, did it make you cry? Emotionally. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. moved. And I was moved by how much they were moved. Mm. That's what happened. People were recounting their experience and they were tearing in the recounting of their experience. So I, it really struck me that I know what this has done for me. I didn't know if it would have the same effect on others. And clearly it was. And so then that led to the next one, the next one. And then a few months later I said, okay, doing this indoors in theaters is great, but I am so passionate about nature and nature is so healing. What if I was able to bring this experience out in nature? And the first thing that came to mind, of course, was the iconic beach here mm -hmm. in Santa Monica, right by the pier there, that beautiful sunset by the ocean. And uh, I said, well, if I, I can't bring a Steinway piano there, as much as they love me, they're not going to let me bring a Steinway piano <laughs> to the beach. You wouldn't even hear it anyway. The beach is actually terrible acoustics. Um, right. I said, okay, well, I can have speakers, but speakers never sound great, you know, in outdoor spaces, especially at the beach. It's windy, the ocean sound. Then what if the whole audience was wearing headphones? And, you know, this is well before, you know, silent disco became kind of a thing. And, and I, I just kind of figured it out and figured out how to play live um, at an electric piano with um, directly into the headphones. And so that people who would approach seeing us, you know, would not hear anything. In the, in the outside, outside of the headphones, it's completely silent. It's, yeah, incredible. And, and, the, and what happens is you put these headphones on. So, you know, it was a pragmatic solution at first, but then something much deeper happened where you put these headphones on. And as we all know, even on our own, if we're just, you know, going for a walk or you're in New York on the subway or wherever you might be, you put the headphones on, you go into this internal world very quickly. And now something additionally is happening where you put this on, they put the headphones on, I then take you on this journey internally. But then at some point you look around and you see that you're sharing this personal intimate individual experience with so many other people and that's where it clicks into place and you realize ah i can have this individual experience and be part of this community well you kind of just took the words out of my mouth because i was going to compliment yeah. you on and congratulate you on nailing this experience because i personally thought it was incredible and really amazing Thank and you. though we were all separate so right. to speak you just felt absolutely connected with everybody that right. was you know, you're surrounded by Without through speaking your to them, music right? yeah without having to spend hours and hours speaking to people getting to Way know their story deeper because you're concentrated on the, well, the energy you know like i've always always said that um and I've, I've i'm a big music head myself um hence my fascination with you with you and your journey and and who you are mm -hmm. and what you do and how you go about it um but music is nothing but energy and yeah. it's the sounds of the soul it's the right. beat it's the heartbeat of a human being you yeah. know when you're creating so to be able to hear your music yeah. go on a physical journey surrounded by people that are also connecting through energetically that music right. your sound and then to be guided on a meditation as yeah. the sun is setting over a near 360 degree yeah. you know view of, of all of la right. is a very very powerful moving right. um you know prolific moment right. in time so we should probably mention so this so now mind travel has taken on like a few different formats right yes. so so we've done it at the beach where people are either lying down or walking around the beach um and then the experience that you had last week which is called the mind travel silent hike yes and so that's that's something i said i want to bring more movement into this and bring people into nature and get some physical movement so we what we do is we we take people you know on this hour and a half long you know, walking. And meditation. it ain't easy. So you got to be fit. You got to be comfortable with like, you yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. And, and you start moving your body in that way and everyone has the headphones on and we just request that everyone is walking in silence up, up to the top of the mountain. 
and it's so profound yes. that connection like you were yes. describing that you feel with other people then when we get to the top we kind of have a shared meditation and, and, and conversation at the top so you there is time to connect you know through language with other people and then we come back down um, so it, it's about bringing movement and nature and music together in that way 